Hey, what's going on, YouTubers? Uh, this is Nick Bled, back with a part two, so to say, right? Um, this this video is going to be overclocking too, but I'm using a different program, which is the EVGA Precision X OC. I think it used to be called Precision X16. So, yeah. Um. I wanted to do this just to show that if you're using a different overclocking tool pretty much everything remains the same there is um, one thing different about this program versus uh, MSI afterburner so the first thing I'm going to do is show you guys that okay let's click here now this is where you're going to select the different tabs for the interface so this is the OC scanner tab and this is uh, basically your monitoring tab okay it's just for you to monitor your stuff can't really make no changes on here but this is the new thing that's different from MSI afterburner and this is an OC scanner and it's an automatic uh, they have a preset here for basic linear and then I think you can do a manual one now this is an automatic overclocking voltage control um, tool here okay so that's actually very good for people who are beginners and don't know much about overclocking and while I'm not a beginner I don't feel I'm an expert either so this is very useful for me I left it on basic um, I wanted to fi I want the, the the voltage to come down when the GPU was not uh, requesting that much power to be needed. So I, I kind of like that. Um, I was watching a couple of videos on it, and I saw one guy. He was just putting a constant voltage through his graphics card, and hey, more power to him. He can do that if he if you know if he doesn't care about well, not to say if he doesn't care, but Maybe he's an expert. Maybe he knows it's safe. So you can do that if you choose, but I would suggest to look look up for more information on that before just fucking with this thing because you know you could fry your graphics card sooner than later. Me, I plan on selling this graphics card down the road, you know, so I'm not really trying to mess with too much voltage control options because I do want the card to be in tip top shape when I decide to sell it um, this button has been grayed out um, from the beginning and I think maybe if I set it to custom here using these tabs here maybe uh, it was still actually grayed out so I don't know if this option is ready yet but it, when you run this it's supposed to run the scan to see how it's going to adjust the volt the voltage curve according to the needs of your graphics card so I'm pretty sure that's how that works but like I said I left it on basic I didn't I'm not gonna touch it after that now let's get to the actual overclocking part um, <clears throat> the setup is the same as MSI afterburner just looks different but everything is the same so let me just go to this menu here and show you. This is your hardware monitoring uh, button here. So you want to make sure that's clicked. So that way when you go to here, it's going to monitor your hardware, okay? Here is the on-screen display settings. I leave that on just to keep it on. But this is the actual on-screen display button. And this is going to put a lot of stats and uh, information on your screen while you're overclocking or just playing a game or whatever I keep that off because I don't want that running um, this is the startup button so basically the tooltip says apply oh, hold on. Uh, apply a pre damn why is it doing that apply predefined 
profile at Windows Startup. So these are your profiles here. So when you want to save a certain type of overclock that you achieved, you'll save it to one of these numbers. And when you click this, whichever profile you have, it'll start that up with Windows automatically. This is the shadow play icon. So this, when you click this, it'll open up your shadow play for an for uh, NVIDIA graphics cards. Here they're showing you your active GPU, as you can see. Here goes your fan uh, RPM meter. Shows you where your fan is right here. This is the curve, so this is important. If you want to manually set your fan curve, okay, manually set your fan curve, what you're going to want to do is make sure that this auto button is highlighted. Okay, then you're going to click on curve. It's going to break up two boxes. Now, this is my manual curve setup, and this is how I like it. Okay, so when it's at 50 degrees Celsius, the fans kick up to 30% speed. 60 degrees Celsius, it goes up to 45% speed. 70 degrees Celsius, it goes up to 60 um percent speed and then at 80 it goes to 80 percent speed and I left it at that I don't want my I try not to maximize everything I like to leave a little headroom I don't want the card you know being degraded over time too quickly because I do plan on selling this card in the future um so we're gonna get out those boxes uh this is just a little menu, so you got your fan. Oh, when you're setting your fan control, I'm sorry, too. When you click the curve and you, you come to this fan tab, click this so you can actually set your curve yourself. So it says enable automatic fan curve, but what it really means is enable manual fan control. So make sure that's clicked, okay? And make sure this auto button is also clicked so it does it for you. So after you set your uh, curve, then this program, EVGA Precision X, will know, oh, let's follow the user-defined uh, fan curve, okay? Um, leave it on custom, of course. So we go to the general tab, and uh, we have the, you know, start, minimize, start with operating system. Check for updates. I set to never, and I'll check them manually myself. You can set them on startup all the time, every time you start your computer, or daily, weekly, or monthly. You can uh, set the screenshot format. I pick JPEG. It's a smaller file, you know, still good quality. Uh, you can just screenshot folder is here, blah, blah, blah. Okay, you can view it. Nice. Pixel stuff, I left all of this default, but because I have two monitors, I wanted to make sure that um, I select monitor one, and that's the left monitor for me. Okay. Make sure you click OK after you change anything in here, too very important this is showing you the LED logos but because I only have I have uh, LEDs on this graphics card but it's not RGB so I don't have no control over the LED function you would have to buy the uh, I think the for the win edition from EVGA to get the RGB lighting and you got profile set up and you can do a 2D for basically if you're working on regular computer tasks and 3D is for video games and maybe rendering and things like that okay and then you can put your hotkeys in for all that and browse and stuff like that now the interface is English uh, default scan and all this thing so I left all of this regular I didn't put on frame target because I don't need it I'll, I'll let the video games do its v-sync thing okay so that's the menu right there and uh, now for the overclocking just understanding this screen here this screen is important to understand because you have to know that this graphics card from EVGA super clocked edition is already overclocked has a base overclock already when you find the uh, founders edition of the 1070s you will <clears throat> you will see that it'll probably say 1506 as a as a base GPU clock so they're already overclocking these out the box so what you're gonna see here is 
the base overclock from EVGA and the memory. But me, I did this to my memory. This won't read this. I think this will read like 404, I mean 4004, okay? Um, and you're seeing this change here is because I already added 170. Oh, sorry. So yeah, 100, uh, 4,006, as you can see with the numbers. <clears throat> and this is uh, added in there already too. So that's actually what I did, not what EVGA did. Um, so this red line here is what actual boost clock you get. So GPU boost 3.0. This is what it's going to take it from here to this number by itself automatically. Okay. So you don't have to worry about setting that. It's just going to do this automatically. So whatever overclocking you do here, GPU boost is going to do its own thing and add its own overclocking. But whatever you do here is going to apply to the base clock only. So this is how you're going to do it. Same setup as MSI Afterburner. Set the power target to max because you're going to want your graphics card to be able to pull power, pull more power if it needs to. The temp is letting you know that this is what it's going to get up to at that um, power target. That's pretty high and I don't want my cards running that hot. So make sure you turn on your fan curve and fix it to the way you want your fans to sound and how fast you want them to run. Uh, to, to cool your car the way you want it cooled. So the first thing you want to do, but where I left off is you want to start with the GPU clock offset and then afterburner is called the core clock. Do increments of 10 to 20. Apply every time you change it. Wait. Run this valley or heaven. If you get an instant crash, meaning you press run on here, and it's an instant crash that lets you know if you're just meaning if your display driver crashes or something like that that lets you know automatically okay set this back set this number back so let's say if I did crash at 65 I will pull it back down to 55 run this for about 10 minutes see if you get an instant uh, instant crash if you don't then that lets you know that that's a stable clock for your uh, core clock okay the next thing you're going to want to go to is the mem clock offset, okay? And you're going to want to do this one, maybe uh, 10 to 30 increments, okay? In between there, whichever one you want. Um, when I started this, I actually got up to uh, 500, but... And my benchmark, I realized that some of my stats were going down when I got up to 500 and I did not crash. No artifacts, no nothing. My uh, benchmark stats said that I had a higher number than when it was at 500. So that's just something to take note of that you can put those numbers up all the way, but sometimes your numbers will go down. These cards are already kind of manufactured and sent to you at optimal speeds so sometimes overclocking might actually mess up your performance you can squeeze a little bit more power out of out of your uh, graphics card and sometimes you will gain performance but sometimes if you go overboard it can actually take away from your performance in inside these uh, synthetic benchmarks if you get a crash or you see like colored pixels or any 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 screen blinking or anything any any kind of weirdness that you that's not in the video not not in the benchmark uh, 10 to 20 dial it back keep dialing back dial it back and uh you'll get a stable memory clock too now i just want to say that um this priority button here on this precision x says allow the dynamic clock adjustments to be prioritized between power or temperature i leave this thing just the way it is not highlighted this is a link button and allow voltage and temperature targets to be linked or remain separate across all similar graphics cards now this <clears throat> is for multiple is for slide setup or crossfire setup so when you do an overclock it's going to apply that overclock to all the uh, gpus you have okay 
This is the actual voltage slider, which it wasn't apparent to me until I messed around with it. But you can actually push this slider up and the color will change to, to, to I think, green maybe or red. One of the two. I think it's red maybe. You can do that manually if you wanted to. Um, And yeah, I mean, pretty much that's it for the Precision X overclocking tutorial. You, if you have any issues and you don't, you want to go back to default. Just click this button. It'll take all your, all of, come on, all of this stuff you did here, and it'll just bring it right back to default base. Okay. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this helped the beginners out there because that's why I'm really doing this for. Um, some of you intermediate level people too. Maybe it helps you if you didn't know how to work this one and you've been using MSI for, you know, forever like I was. Uh, you experts, hey, if I messed up on some, let me know, okay? I need to learn more about this stuff anyway. So, uh, this is Nick Bled. Comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching. Peace.